Hi everybody, uh, my name is Botswana. Uh, so let's get started. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna teach you how to calculate the percentage, uh, the yield percent, the yield percent of uh, whichever um, experiment that you do. For example, like now, let's do copper chloride. We wanna find the yield percent of the copper chloride, okay? Uh, let's get straight to the question. So let's go to the question here, just a second. Uh, yeah, right here, okay? So let me just show you how to do this. This is it, okay? So what we do, this family is very, very easy, okay? So let's see here, what percent of yield of, uh, just, just see, let's see. What is the percent of the yield of copper? Oh, so they were doing experiment, these people. Okay, which experiment they were doing? Okay, so we had a aluminum, and then react with the copper sulfate. And then what we got, this is gonna be the replacement reaction, means this aluminum is gonna come and replace this copper here. So it means is they're gonna switch because they replace me. So then we're gonna have a aluminum is gonna come into position of the copper here. So it's gonna be sulfate is gonna stay in its position. Let me do like this, let me show you. Like this, just say. Means they switch. This copper is the metal, so this metal is gonna come and replace this calcium, uh, this copper. So then aluminum is going to come in a position of copper, and then we want to say plus, plus copper. But remember the valence of aluminum 3, how you know the look, you come in a periodic table here, right? The periodic table tell you uh, the valence of each element. Look, for example, this is a group 1 here. So the group 1, they have a 1 element, group 2, they have a 2 element. These are transitional metal, transitional metal. Most of them, not all, they have a valence of 2, most of them, except silver ag it has silver uh, uh it has a valence of one silver okay so this is going to be valence one so the group determine the valence for example this group one means the valence is one group two the valence of element is two i'll show you what the valence meaning this one here like i say these are transitional metal all of these one here in this part here so just ignore them just know all of them they have a valence of two except silver most of them i can say all of them most of them okay these are group three Group 3 has a valence of 3. Now, here we separate now. Just put your mind line. And then you start from the end. This one does not have a valence. And then this is negative 1. This is negative 2. And then negative 3. And this one here, uh, it's just at the middle. See? Which is going to have, it could be positive 4 or negative 4. You see? So you go uh, valence of 1 here for the first one, valence of 2. And all of these are transitional metal. Like I said, have it. most of them they have a 2. For example, manganese 2. Uh, iron 2 unless if they change kind of but for now just know that okay to here these are metal all these are metal all these are metal and then here number four it could be either metal or non-metal depending on who he react so just keep this face and they start from the end no valence negative one negative two negative three you understand what i'm saying so now the aluminium look for example aluminium so when you see aluminium for example like the one that i would deal with so aluminium so aluminium is here so what is the valence? Look, group one, one valence, group two, two valence, group three, three valence. Mm -hmm. So the aluminium has a valence three. Like I said, this is a transition. Copper, for example. If you say copper, copper, we say anything here is a transition of metal. Most of them have the most of them they have a valence of two. For example, if you say copper is a transition of metal, you see you find it here. So it's gonna be copper two. And the metal. So any metal is has a positive valence. Okay, any metal have a pop. All the metal have a positive balance. For example, aluminum. Aluminum is metal also because, like we say, these are metal. These are metal. Excuse me. I'm supposed to stop here. These are metal. These are metal. So the group determine the balance. For example, you say aluminum. Aluminum is here in a group three, group one, group two, group three. So the balance could be three positive. And all them have a positive. For example, if you say copper, copper is here, means it's gonna be copper. Two. How do you know? Because you say these are transitional metal, and all of them they have a valence of two. All of them, mostly, I should say. That. For example, except silver. Silver it has a positive one. See, but most of them here, iron. Iron is Fe. Is iron Fe, and then it's positive two. All the metal have a positive two. You know what I'm saying? So just that you know. But I don't want to waste a lot of time with this. But let me just go a little bit. For example, if somebody say neon, neon is here. We say this is zero. And this is negative one, negative two, valence, negative three. But this one here can be four, positive or negative. It depends who he react to. It. See, and this is three. So this is uh, three here. Okay. If we say, for example, oxygen, oxygen 
is a non metal because it has a negative valence these are non metal here non metals so oxygen is going to be two negative and the sign always is after the number never say oxygen negative two no it's two negative okay uh for example if you say uh sulfur it's going to be s see this is zero negative one negative two so sulfur is in this group okay so you're going to say sulfur two negative so just have to remember that okay so quickly catching up quick okay so this is going to be one which is metal positive one positive two and all of these most of them they have what positive two but here is going to be positive three these are metal for non-metal you're going to start zero negative one negative two negative three these are non-metal and here we can say it can be metal non-metal but the value so all of this is four but it can be either the two but it depends who he reacted but it's four for example if you say carbon carbon is four valence is four okay let's say silicon silicon also is four silicon is going to be silicon s is four see so just have to know okay now let's go back to the question because i don't want to waste a lot of time here so there i remember we were using aluminium so aluminium is going to be aluminium aluminium uh, aluminium is here means this is group three one two three so it's going to be three positive you know what i'm saying so aluminium is three positive that's the valence of aluminium so i'm not going to come uh, back here over because now you know how to get the valence so i just want to focus on this so now we say aluminium has the valence of three because you know how this come about and sulfur sulfur is a radical so it has a negative so you can memorize these things you see what i'm saying you can simply memorize so what happened they switch this uh this valence so the valence of aluminium is going to come after this sulfur so take this right here see and then so we don't want to write this anymore and then take this valence of radical right here but i don't worry about the sign ignore the sign so that's how it comes okay the sulfur always uh it has a valence of negative two these are radicals you memorize radicals you can even google chemist radicals okay you can just check on the books or you can check in the social uh sites chemist radicals. okay so that's how they got this so they got this one three and they got this two that's our come about and then we plus three now when we're done with everything but we want to see if our question is is balanced let me write clean now let me write clean thing because now you know how to write so we had aluminium and they react to the uh copper sulfate but with uh, copper sulfate okay okay for example like here why there's no number here because the copper the valence of copper is two because it's transitional metal and sulfate is a radical which always has a negative two two negative sorry sign is after two negative so what happened look they're going to switch it means this is going to come here it's going to be copper these two is going to come here and then this one here is going to come after sulfate means they always switch so look two and two gonna cancel so that's why they have a copper sulfate here there's no number under see now when you react this is like i said they're going to switch this aluminium is going to come and replace this copper because aluminium is more reactive than copper so we're going to have aluminium sulfate but the valence of aluminium like i say is three positive you can check there in a periodic table and the sulfate is a radical it has a negative two two negative because it's a radical so we switch uh we switch this two is going to come here and this three is going to come after here so let's switch so we're not going to write the one on top so you leave the one on top don't write anymore so the three is going to come after that's why they got this here okay now we plus so this copper now remember it was replaced by aluminium because aluminium is more reactive so we're only going to be left with only copper here you see so when you finish you want to see if everything is balanced now you go how many aluminium here we have a two aluminium so since the aluminium is two look aluminium there are two right two here before aluminium that's how it's called balance in the question now you come here how many copper uh sulfate excuse me how many sulfate look the sulfate there are three of them so here i'm gonna write on three so this three is gonna affect it you all when you balance you write number before not after so that's all right my three here but look now the copper now ha since i wrote it look at sulfate at three so sulfate three from how we got but then you must balance so how you balance that's to say since oh my good sorry, sorry, sorry so since you have to balance the three also it must be three number but you write before don't write after you so you see it has also affected the copper copper the three now means i must write three here so that's a balance equation that's how i got this equation that's what they have this equation here see i don't want to waste a lot of time but i just want to show you how it comes about but for the most case they're going to give you an example okay so we want to find the percentage of yield 
uh, what is the percentage of yield of copper gram which were produced? Oh, so they produce of copper. So we want to find the percentage of the of the yield of the copper. Okay. So now it's very easy. Let me show you how to get percentage of yield. So we want to say here we want to get. Oh my God. Okay. Percent. Uh, is it going to be nothing to think? Okay. Let me do this. Uh, nah, it's going to be enough. So I'm going to say percentage of yield, percentage of yield of anything equal to uh, actual yield. Actual yield is what you have reminded with after you experiment. Actual yield over over theoretical well yield. Theoretical well yield. And then you multiply by 100%. So take actual yield, divide by uh, theoretical yield, and then you divide by 100% yield. Oh my god, this yield is... Theoretical... Oh. Theoretical yield. And then you multiply by 100%. This is how you get the percentage of, of yield. Now, do you have the actual yield? Actual yield is what we left with after we done this experiment. Something which is excess. The percentage of yield of copper produced. Oh, so I was doing experiment and then I'm left with a certain copper. See, but how did I left with that copper? Because how did I left with this copper? Because aluminum and the copper sulfate, they reacted. And this aluminum come and replace this copper and then we end up left with copper. So this is the mass of the copper which is left, which is percentage of this copper produced. Oh, so this is the one which is produced. So this is actual yield. So we have the actual yield already. So the problem is how we're going to get the theoretical yield. So the actual yield we got already. So I can say, oh, my actual yield, I know. Which is this one? So I can say, this is actual yield. Let me say A, A, what? Actual yield. So this one we got. So the problem is to get theoretical yield. Let me show you how to get that. That's a tricky part. It always confuses a lot of students. So let me drink a water a little. So how we get there? Let me show you. So look at uh, uh, actual uh, theoretical yield. You say, uh, look, look. How I'm gonna say this? Well, I'll say, uh, I'm gonna say you get the theoretical yield by saying, look, by saying, take all reacted. What is reacted? We reacted this sulfate with aluminum. So take all what it reacted like we got copper right this copper come from this sulfate so that's what you check you write uh its mass write out its mass so what is mass it's mass of this see they they say when one per seven of aluminium react to the excess copper to sulfate you see so take what has reacted which is what aluminium and sulfate write them here See, so I'm gonna say uh, the aluminium which reacted, which is uh, 1.87 gram, and then you multiply by say one mole. Okay, you memorize this part. It's not like all the time it's gonna be this. Okay, take the mass of whatever reacted for this case is aluminium, and then take say one mole of what reacted but one mole of what one mole of what of, of aluminium over over uh the molar mass of aluminium how you get the molar mass molar mass is like look you come here so you take the one mole of aluminium and then you come here let me show you how you can get the molar mass of aluminium the molar mass is here look Molar mass are this number here. You see, in any of these uh, element, there is two number. The one at the bottom, the one at the top. Look, aluminium. Aluminium have a thirteen and twenty-seven. Thirteen and twenty-seven. So the bigger number is the molar mass, and the smaller number is number of electron, or sometimes they call what uh, atomic number. But this is what is the molar mass. Okay. Any element, the smaller one, 
is electron or atomic number, but the bigger one is what is molar mass or atomic mass, sometimes they call it. So now we come here, we're gonna say for aluminum now, atomic mass of aluminum is 27. So I'm gonna say divide by atomic mass of aluminum, and then also we'll multiply, feel me. Now we go for the copper. How many copper here? The copper, are you with me? Let me say it again. You take the molar mass of whatever reacted, and then you multiply by one mole of aluminium. One mole of aluminium. And then you divide by the molar mass of aluminium. By the molar mass of aluminium is 27, like I show you. And then you multiply now by this one here, which is produced. Okay, so I'm going to say multiply by three moles, because for now it's three moles of, see, three, there are three. But if you just one, you say one. Three moles. Of copper that you over see you over by number of the aluminium how many number of aluminium there are two so take these moles divide by these more so so three moles of copper divided by two moles for now it's two moles of aluminium okay but here just simply say one mole of aluminium divided by that by molar mass and here take the mole produced divided by the mole you see here the two and here the three so take the product of the moles produced and then divided by the one which contribute in a production of it and then you multiply and after you multiply see you multiply by molar mass of copper see these are moles now you write a smaller mass here so molar mass of copper let me show you how you get molar mass i think i showed you right there Come here again, molar mass of copper. Where's copper? Copper is this one here. So the molar mass is 60, 63 point something something. This is atomic number. This is a molar mass that bigger number. Bigger number. So you come and they say, okay, let me take molar mass of the copper. So here you write moles and here it's molar mass. So you multiply the molar mass, which is 63.5. You over by one mole on that copper, and then after you do that, and then put all this in the calculator. Don't worry about this more. Miss multiply number 1.8 times 3 times 64. All of this divided by 2 divided by 1, which is going to give us 6.6 gram, 6.6 gram of what of copper. You see what I'm saying? Of the copper produced. See. So after that, this is going to be our theoretical yield. This is our theoretical yield. So for that case now, we can plug it back. We say, okay, now let's finish up. And say, percentage yield equal to actual yield. But what is the actual yield, you say? Our actual yield is what? One point. This one here. Oh, no, 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 no. My problem, my problem. Is this one here 4.65 4.65 and then we over we over by the theoretical yield which we just got is six times six and then we multiply by hundred percent so plug in the calculator this is going to give you 70.5 but remember this percent so I'm saying this gonna be percent, and that's how you get the percentage yield for this case here, okay? And if you trace it, uh, just in case, if you trace it in, let me do this, let me do this, let me do this. I can attach solution for you here, so it can be easy for you to learn. Okay. Uh, okay, now let me do this. Just a second, just a second, for me. So you can get a lane. Get something for you here quick just a second thing i want to make something which is very interesting for you so you can be okay also what i'm saying is uh if you did not understand you can just have a look at this solution maybe it might make your situation easy just look and then also you can figure out you know, sometimes everybody got their own ways of observing 
or thinking process. Perhaps when you look at the solution, you can have a little picture how this comes about. So have a look at it and see. You can pause the video and have a look. And listen, fam, if you face time, please come subscribe here, share. i uh, share this with a lot of people. And uh, I should say thanks a lot and I'm out. Peace.